Welcome everyone. Um, what we want to do with this session is just talk about our trapping philosophy and, and what we're doing. You'll know that we've got um, something like 350 traps in the commons to um, protect breeding field uh, in our rivers so that we can enjoy that, that tonga as we drive up the hills early in the morning and come home late at night. Um, you'll be aware that we've got uh, 180 something of these out there. Um, what we've done in the last six months is we've added a few new tools to the arsenal. Um, uh, we've got 10 of these Victor boxes, which I'll talk about in a minute, but mostly our investment's been in 160 uh, Dock 200s, although we've gone to the BT 200s, which are the stainless steel versions brought into the country from China, which we've found is far more cost effective. Um, so um, it's about having a variety of tools out there. If you rely on the same tool, uh, it gets blunt. So you've got to mix it up, you've got to keep moving in terms of the tools you're using, how you're using those tools, the baits you use. Um, so it's about keeping, your, keeping yourself ahead of the predators because the reason these things are pests is that they're highly adaptable. They change the, their operation to survive what you do. The, catching the easy ones is not so hard. It's the ones that survive that become hard. Um, and here's a statistic that you all want to take away and never forget. 80% of predator encounters with a device like this don't result in any interaction whatsoever. 80%. So they'll turn up and go, yeah, nah, and leave. So there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do to enhance the interaction rates. Uh, an encounter is not a capture. An interaction is a potential capture. Um, and if you have an interaction that results in a scare or an injury, they'll never go near anything strange again and that animal will become untrackable. So it's really important that we get it right. Um, I'll first go through our new set of kit, um, the BT200s or the DOC200s. This is a fairly standard um, tool that's been around for a long time. We've refined it and refined it. Um, one of the problems with double sets is that there's a problem called sympathetic firing. When one trap goes off, the vibration of one trap going off causes the other one to go off. Everybody's tried all sorts of stuff to, to manage that. What we've done in the last sort of 12 months is hit on a recipe where we don't screw our boxes into the bottom of the trap. They're sitting on a piece of felt, and these just come out of the My Food Bag foods. They're just wool, and they sit on there. Um, and when they go off, they just jump up in the box. You've got to bead your box in really, really nicely into the soil. So you need a spade and you need to loosen the soil and bead your box in. And putting a, a heavy rock on the top helps as well. And then the vibration of the trap going off with one critter all happens there and this one, this one stays good. The problem with these is that they are as dangerous as a loaded firearm for your hand. So the thing I'm going to focus on, if you guys are going to be out there servicing secret foundation traps that are configured like this, safety, safety, safety. Otherwise you'll lose a hand or a finger. If you get one of these on your hand, you'll end up in A&E with it on your hand and you'll lose your hand or you'll lose a finger. They've been machined out of stainless steel and they're razor sharp. So, gloves. Um, you've got to wear gloves, otherwise you'll cut your hands. Uh, even just playing with them, um, some of the edges are razor sharp. Yep. Um, we have a series of seating tools because you haven't got the purchase of the box to, um, to load these traps. Simple procedure. Put that back on the seat, make sure that's safe and attach a safety clip. Never, never put this in the box without a safety clip on. This is like a loaded firearm, man. You've got to have ultimate respect, otherwise you could potentially lose a hand or a finger. And that's a lot of paperwork for Josh. <laughs> Health and safety is everything, especially when you're miles out in the bush. It's a little bit of dicking around, I know, but please don't take these for granted. Loaded firearm. Um,
They're nice and safe once you've got the clips on. But they're bloody not when you haven't. Set your box up after, um, before you put them back in. What we're using is a combination of flour, scented flour and mutton fat. Um, you can put eggs in there, some people use ping pong balls, some people use um, golf balls. But I haven't seen many stakes running around with golf clubs or ping pong bats. Um, the reality is, 80% uh, of critters encounter one of these traps, they look in and they go, yeah, nah. Unless you've done pre-feeding and luring and, and you've got something highly attractive in there, your, your chances of getting them in there are really remote. Why mutton fat? Um, wasps don't touch it, it doesn't go off. This has been sitting in this trap for weeks. It's fresh as the day it went in there. Um, it, it lasts, it doesn't go all manky with um, maggots and stuff like rabbit bait does. It doesn't go <coughs> rotten with mould and stuff. Um, you rub it all over your box entrance. See that? That's called prefig. That's like a free giveaway to your restaurant. Um, I also use the kidney fat. Um, to create little Hansel and Gretel trails out on, out here, within sort of five meters either side. Um, and then flour blaze, standard ice and sugar flour, and uh, this is eucalyptus, I think. Uh, we used vanilla down in Pikeville the other day. Something to attract the rats and the possums and the hedgehogs, because they'll come to this area and they'll create scent trails that stoats and other predators will follow. So you're queuing everybody onto your trap site. Um, so, just like a possum trapper, don't put it on your traps, blaze it up a tree over here, chuck a few handfuls around the place, put some stoppers out, make sure you scuff the ground leading up to the trap. I'll talk about these things in a minute. So, use your poop, scuff that, blaze the flower in there, make sure you've got your trap on a game trail. If you just go and plonk it somewhere in the bush, um, it's not going to catch us unless you think about how does, how's this critter using this bush. He's following the deer trails. He's following the rivers. Um, put a log or something along here to guide the critter. Blaze a flower on the log. Just create that interest. Pre-feeding, luring, uh, encouraging that interaction. 80% of critters who front up there, if you don't do this effort, will just go, yeah, nah, see you later. They won't go in there. What we want is to maximise what happens here? So, once you've lit up both baffles, you can do both baffles. Um, it's all, all good stuff. Um, make sure that you always open the box. You'll find most of our traps have got an arrow on them. Undo that, open them in the direction of the arrow so you don't flog this out. Uh, and then, uber, uber carefully, put your trap in. Put your bait in already. This is the last thing you do, is put your trap in. Leave the safety clip on. Put the other one in. Keeping your hand on this side. Take the clip off. Take the clip off. Close the box. Put your weight on the top. For the first next three nights, two or three nights, that's gold. When it rains and it starts washing the smells away and stuff. When you check trap lines, the reason that the pests are manky in them is because you caught them within the first few nights of the last time you checked the trap. So for the next three or four nights, this is going to be absolutely gold. And that's what you want. The ground's all scuffed up. You can smell the leaf litter. There's flower blazers around, possums, hedgehogs, rats are going to start coming in. Those scent trails and pad runs that open up to this device are going to draw the stoats in. Bang. Yeah. It sounds common sense, but this is how the gamekeepers used to operate in Scotland. Many of them will have a stoat and rabbit guts in an onion bag. Um, they'll drag behind them on a string, and that'll leave a scent trail through the bush between your traps. The scent trail that sets up is one of my mates chasing a wounded prey item. If I'm hungry, that's uber exciting for me as a predator. If I've already had some mutton fat crumbs out here and I turn up there and there's some mutton fat on the outside and there's another big hunk in the middle, the chances of me going in there and getting caught are through the roof, yeah? That if you can get that 80% down to 50%, you'll have two and a half times more catch rates. Hey, 
So it's, it's about attention to detail. And um, people who just plonk their boxes and leave a golf ball and walk away, um, they catch nothing. Not because there's nothing there, because their, their traps are not really that attractive. It's like having a big sign in a window saying, danger, do not enter. Um, whereas this is a big neon sign, under new management, real young. Free giveaways, been in everybody's letterbox. Um, yeah, and there's neon signs pointing you, but like those real estate agent signs, eh, Gary? Open home, this way, <laughs> open trap, you know? Um, it's just all about those little 1%, 2%, 5% itching up to get the best possible outcome for this device. And it's the same for these. So many people believe the hype that, you know, see you in six months, yeah, right. It's the same, first couple of weeks is your golden hour, after that, just drops away. Attention to detail. I find with my A24s, um, they're far better on a board like this. Um, you have something there. An animal is less likely to stick his head up into a shroud, like when it's vertical. When it's on an angle like that, and if you blaze that with flour and rub some mutton fat, there's mutton fat in the top, you've got far more chance of a critter getting into that. That's still safe for a kiwi chick. Um, it will meet the dock specifications for, for non-targets. This one's covered in slugs and snail slime because they really love this, um, this flower as well. But it all adds to the interest. And if you haven't caught, shift it. Another statistic to remember, 20% of your traps catch 80% of your critters. If that continually doesn't catch, shift it. It's in the wrong place. It's in a cold, wet, damp hole. Put it on a warm terrace where it's sunny and dry. Put it on a game trail. We're lucky that the Sega Deer have got highways all through the Kaimanawas and the Stoats are using, a lot of, a lot of them are using the tramping tracks, but a lot of them also use the, the game trails, the Sega game trails, so do the possums. So set these up along the trails, not across them. Otherwise the old mate will just be and gone. He needs to come in here. That's why you put a big log or something along here. Stuck the ground, clear the game trail right out to here, and put some flower lure out there so that there's this, there's this really interesting sight in the forest that's going to encourage them to interact with your device. You wonder why the socks are there? If you come to one of our traps and you're servicing those traps and there's a stoat in one and nothing in the other, please don't dry fire the traps. Um, they'll smash the welds over time. The reason we've invested in tantalised timber and stainless steel is we want these to last for the next decade or more. So just simply, um, that will stop the welds shitting themselves and then you get into your money. Lure it up, freshen it up every time, make it as exciting as possible so that when the critter turns up the next night or for the few nights after you've been there, bam, you'll get them. But safety, 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 please. Don't treat these with any sort of um, contempt or, or slackness. They'll bite you. Uh, it's like firearms. You point them in a safe direction, you absolutely treat them with respect or you will end up with one of these on your hand at A&E and that will create a lot of paperwork for Josh. So, um, that's... Oh, I'll go through this one as well. This is a... Um, this is a trap set that my partner developed when she had some, at the men's shed, she had some um, materials left over from making these boxes. So we, we looked at what Predator 3 were doing and Doc were doing with their Victor sets. Um, and we started baiting these up with mutton fat as well. Rubbing mutton fat on the front, luring them up with flour, catching stoats on these. Um, bloody awesome. That box there weighs 800 grams and $32 to make. That box there is seven and a half kilos, eh, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> and um, it costs $129. So this has been a, a more cost-effective way. The trap has to go right at the back of the box just to create a nice safe gap there for non-targets. Same deal, though. On a game trail, lure it up, scuff the ground, make it exciting. The first few nights of you servicing this is the golden hour for that to catch. Um, eggs... Eggs are okay if you're in October, November, December when there's eggs all through the landscape and critters. Um, but 
don't plonk them on the nails like that. That doesn't look like anything. Most of our critters see eggs that shape. They're, they're focused on going to a nest and seeing a shape like that. So set them in the, in the nails. That's natural. That's not natural. Not many eggs sit in a nest like that. Yeah? It's just that 1% attention to detail every time there's a difference between a critter turning up and going, yeah, nah, or turning up and going, oh, short. Bang. Yeah?